And so what's so important about sunlight? Well, sunlight's important for a number of things. And one of these things is the generation of vitamin D. So vitamin D is relatively rare in foods. And so our main source is that through sunlight exposure. So sunlight shining on our skin is the first step in generating vitamin D. Now, while we all wish that England was like Barbados and sunny all the time, we're all too familiar with scenes like this. <laughs> so this has led to realize that people in England might, are vitamin D deficient. So we can measure the amount of vitamin D we have in our bodies, and we can class it as severely deficient, deficient, insufficient, or sufficient. So during the winter, most of us are bordering on severe deficiency for vitamin D. And even in the summer, we're just about sufficient. And this is likely to be wearing sunscreen and avoiding the sun due to risk of skin cancer. So what's so important about vitamin D? So we've always been, to always been told that it's, we need vitamin D for good bones, to prevent rickets. But so st studies in the lab have shown that it's important for a good immune system and a healthy nervous system. And there's also been direct links of vitamin D and MS. So here we have one study from the States. So they looked at um, large cohorts of nurses in the States. They're starting about age 30 and followed up in the early eight, started from the early 80s and followed up until about now. So every year, these nurses filled in a questionnaire about their dietary intake. And over the course of the study, 515 of these nurses developed MS. And comparing the vitamin D intake of the nurses who developed MS to the nurses who remained healthy, it was shown that the nurses who developed MS took in less vitamin D. Now, another study, again from the States. Um, so this one was you're looking at the US military. So the US military, being crazy as they are, now, every routine blood sample that they take, they bank the blood. So they now have some 40 million blood samples stored somewhere. Um, so 257 cases of MS were identified in military personnel, and these were compared to uh, healthy individuals. So these individuals had uh, blood samples banked before they got MS. <coughs> and so looking at these blood samples for vitamin D, it was shown that MS patients tend to be more vitamin D deficient than healthy controls. So there's now a strong body of evidence to support a role for vitamin D in MS. Vitamin D is not the only environmental factor involved in MS. Uh, so going through the clinical history of MS patients and the clinical records, it was shown that MS patients tend to have more likely have had glandular fever when they were growing up. So glandular fever is caused by a common virus. So like Ben mentioned, it's one of these viruses like JC virus. Um, it's common in most of us. Uh, in most people, so 90% of the people in the UK have it. Most people, when we get infected, nothing happens. In a small minority, some, we get glandular fever, and in even a tiny proportion, it causes Hodgkin's lymphoma. If we look at the risk of MS with EB infection, so if you get EB infection, EBV infection, and you don't get any symptoms, there's no risk effect on it, the risk of MS. If you're infected with EBV and you have glandular fever, your risk of MS is increased. But the interesting thing is, if, you ne if you're one of those people that never get infected by EBV, you virtually have zero risk for MS. So it seems that you need to be infected with EBV to get MS. Now, so the big question is, how can we prevent MS? And talks are going on across the globe about the best way of preventing MS. So the two ways currently being considered are to prevent EBV infection. Now, this would involve a vaccine, and we're not sure about side effects. It's probably the riskiest option. And the most straightforward or easiest seems vitamin D supplementation. But with vitamin D, we're not sure how much vitamin D to give and when to give it to. And, um, this is being intensively studied here at BART, and it's something that we need your help with. Now, it seems too good to be true that vitamin D supplementation could prevent MS. So I'd just like to leave you with this bit of data. So I told you that the risk for a, a genetically ident identical twin of an MS patient is about 30%. But this is for a twin living in the northern states of the US, in northern Europe, or Canada. If the twins living in southern states of the US or southern Europe, their risk is only 5%. So that's an 80% prevention of MS, essentially. So I do believe we will be able to prevent MS. I'm not sure when it will happen, but it will happen. Thank you for listening.